Welcome to another episode of The Epic Family Road Trip. Good morning guys, it is Tuesday, March the 8th, and we are, have uh, Worsley in the shop, and right now they're working on trying to mount a, a solar panel up on top of the camper. So we've got to mount it to the front, of course, so that we can lift, uh, so it doesn't impede the lifting of the, the camper rooftop, but um, that's going in, and meanwhile they're also working on a brack, bracket system for the Manager 30 and all that. So. We'll show you uh, as the build progresses, but it's an exciting time. We're getting the uh, solar and electrical all squared away here for the team. We are installing a 180 watt Red Arc solar panel to supply constant charging to our in-cabin battery system. Yeah, you're drilling holes in the roof. <laughs> Even better. Okay. Good morning. It is March the 8th and uh, we're here in Oklahoma and Carol and I are heading down the road to a glass doctor to get the windshield replaced in Bandy. Um, it's been cracked for some time as you probably know from our videos so uh, we just haven't been in one place long enough to get to bring it in and you know get that repair done so Today's a big day. She'll have some new glass on uh, Bandy very shortly. We decided to just go with the regular panel of glass. Um, for the cost of it, I think yeah, we could do, you know, we could replace the windshield four times for the cost of the other stuff. But I think the girl of glass, so anyway, that's what we're doing. I can see clearly now. All right, well, today's a big day. We're taking the bikes into a KTM dealership that we found somewhere outside of Dallas, Texas. It's um, it's going to be a big deal for us. We've been talking for months about re-gearing the bikes. The stock gearing is 46 tooth rear and a 15 tooth 
front, we're gonna be trying out a 14 tooth front sprocket with 48 teeth on the rear. And we're looking at like 51 or 52 on one of the bike's rears as well to test. And then on top of that, obviously we're getting a new chain to compensate for the new gearing. And then I'm replacing my clutch and my clutch case. The, the clutch that I'm replacing it with is gonna be awesome because that's burning out. That's been really annoying on the trails for the last, last few that we've done, obviously none recently. And then getting the case fixed will be a peace of mind, you know, not having oil leaking out of the bike when we're off-road. It's a front drive shift. Really? Yep. I thought it the whole front drive shift. Let's go. This is exciting. We got our new um, design on our t-shirts back in stock. So if you want your t-shirt, you can get it at theeffortstore.com. Look at that. And that. It's like the classic one, right? Yeah, this is like the original right here. It used to be longer. Ten, probably. Yeah. Or maybe next day, depending on. All right, so this is the red vision panel that uh, we're mounting in the back of the Jeep. And the guys here uh, fabricated a nice mount for it, and we, we're actually using a 67 Designs arm to mount it. And so that's going to be awesome. That's going to be from the back, so we can just lean in and uh, check the batteries and turn on lights and, and other functions. So yeah, it's going to be hard mounted in there shortly. You can loosen it up and tuck it over here if you got a bunch of stuff packed in the back or if you want to be able to get to it from back here you can point it this way if you're sitting in the jeep if it's raining or something you can flip it around the other way and get to it no matter where you're at so yeah that's gonna be awesome the the ball mount makes it versatile for sure there we go here the team is installing an outlet so that we can plug into shore power if the vehicle is sitting still for any period of time. <laughs> I think I'll have to trim that hole out a little bit. I didn't want to make a gigantic hole and not be able to back up. Dab a little silicone on there. Make sure we don't get no extra water in the Jeep. some extra fuel solutions now. We're probably going to carry mostly uh, premium in there for the boys' bikes as a, a backup, but uh, yeah, between our regular tank, the auxiliary fuel tanks, and these, we're going to be in good shape.
ever seen one that went on like that. The, where it's, okay. All right, some rails. We're gonna be mounting these in all kinds of different locations around the Jeep and in the camper. Um, we've got a solution for holding the uh, iPad. So we're, uh, that's gonna be a, a big improvement. And so yeah, there's all kinds of arms here and we'll, let's, let's get installing them. out on his own he chose to wander this world all alone he said heaven can't help me i'm so far away from where they found me hey guys today i'm gonna take a minute to tell you a bit more about our trailer as you know we've had it for a couple months now so we've had a chance to get it through the, the rocky trails of uh, moab area we've gone into the desert with it we've taken it down the beach and also towed it uh, down the freeway. So we've had this through all kinds of scenarios and so we feel confident now that we've used it to, to tell you what we like and maybe what we don't like about this trailer. Now this trailer is not available uh, anymore. I think it's out of production. It's made by AT Overland and they now focus on making uh, the Habitat campers for the backs of trucks. But you could find some available. A lot were sold back in the day. So I'm not going to really focus on the trailer as much as the functionality of having a trailer, what, uh, how we feel about towing a trailer now because we've gone for many years without and now for months with. Um, I'm going to talk about the tent from Easy On and then just uh, the functionality of the whole thing and how we use it. So starting at the very front, we, it operates on a swivel hitch. So the trailer we've actually had way up on an angle and then the jeep will be on an angle and so it goes it tows really nicely on rough trails and i think the trailer could even flip over and it wouldn't uh, put any strain on the jeep we could just push it back over and keep going so it's a swivel hitch which is really nice and then you work your way back here <clears throat> they've got what we call the garage it's a, a storage area here for all kinds of tools and power equipment and just stuff that we would need on the on the trail there is a battery in here which provides power to the fridge which i'll show you in a moment and the battery charges up as we drive so when we plug in for the tail lights and the brakes it also charges the battery so right behind this compartment we've got a big uh, water reservoir here with a hand pump so you've seen us use that we use this for unfiltered water for washing dishes and showering things like that and then right between these two is some really handy holders uh, for on this side uh, jerry can and on this side is our lifesaver water filtration jerry can and so that's a great place to hold the water and and the fuel really easy to to get access to and we're using this every single day we just lay down our water here pump it up and we've got filtered water if we're in a spot where there's no access to to a river or a water source, we just pump the water out of here into our filtration unit and then we've got clean drinking water. Let's talk for a minute about whether to go with the trailer or not to go with the trailer. It's always a toss up. We picked up this trailer just because of space. We had run out of space completely. We were completely jammed in there. Every day we'd fill up the back of our Jeeps with all our bags and kitchen stuff. Just everything was jammed in the back there. And when we got to camp, we'd offload everything. So we got to the point where we needed some more space. And so what this allowed us to do is to take everything, all the kitchens out of the Jeeps and put them here. So this is really a chuck wagon. This is where Carol makes all the meals and it's, it's really handy. We've got our cold food there. We've got pantry food there. We've got a stove, which I'll show you in detail in a minute. And then there's a lot of extra storage. So we've been able to get alley boxes and put um, all the gear in there and store it in the trailer. So underneath we've got things like toasters and plates and bowls and cups and all that kind of stuff. And then we've got a partner stove, stove that comes out on a slide out 
We've got propane mounted right here. And we just hook it up and there's your stove situation. It's really handy and it folds away nice and clean. And these are sealed and bear proof. So you can, uh, we've been through all kinds of rainy inclement weather and everything in there stays dust and snow and rain free. Now let's talk about the table for a minute. This is just a piece of plywood that was shaped for this area and it tucks neatly under here. It's very easy to remove. And then we store it inside the container, inside the uh, tub of the trailer. So I'm gonna go ahead and open it now. There's these latches, one on either side here. And then you just push up. And it's got nice heavy duty struts on either side which hold everything in place, or which hold up the tent. You can still access the, everything inside the trailer when the, tr when the tent is up. All right, so in the back of the area here, we've got a big 80 liter National Luna fridge. And this is an incredible fridge. It runs off the battery, like I said. It doesn't draw tons of power. It can be used as a full freezer if you want, so the whole thing would freeze meat. Um, or you can have it as a fridge on its own, or you can kind of have both where it's colder at the bottom, and that's how we do it. We put our meats at the bottom and they stay frozen, and then it's more temperate uh, as you get towards the top. So that works really well for us. And we used to have two 40s, and now we've combined them into 180, and we've been able to uh, put the other fridges away for the time being. Um, in the back here, we also have alley boxes with dry goods, so it works as kind of a pantry. And then there's room for all kinds of storage there. And right now we're actually just sorting through our bags and um, getting ready for the next leg of our journey and trying to downsize everything again. So, but typically that would be full, completely full with gear. So the only time you can't open the top, of course, is when someone's sleeping up in the tent. But other than that, you can access everything in the trailer. In that case, if someone's sleeping in the tent and you wanted to get back in here, you do have access to the back. So as long as the swing gate's open, you can get in there and you can pull out your, your pantry and other equipment. So now I'm gonna talk about the tent. It can be set up with, as one person. Uh, obviously, uh, jobs are made easier with more people. And often we have two or three working together setting up the tent. But it's actually quite simple to deploy and to put, put away. So let's take a look at that. First thing is the rain cover. I, I just, there's four of these straps that hold it. And then under here is a ratchet strap that holds the rain cover in place when you're going through high winds or heading down the freeway. So you just open that up and then I, I always like to just do one or two cranks because what you don't want is for that strap to get lost and then you have to go fishing for it. So now that that's up, we just loosen the corners and start folding them up. So I just usually fold up the rain cover like that and put it somewhere safe. It's important to take care of these because the last thing you want is a hole. Uh, these work really well to keep your sleeping area completely dry and we've been through all kinds of uh, snow and rain and, and uh, we've never gotten water in there as long as you take good care of your rain cover. Now we've got the rain cover off, I'm going to get Dan to help me and we're just going to flip up the tent. So you start with the bottom, this is the part that makes up the floor of the outer room. So we're just going to flip that over. <clears throat> and then we bring it up in a couple of pieces. Starting with the top layer. So you fold that up and over the way we've done there. And then it, as I set that up, it'll just set up the rest of the tent. It's really that simple. The next step is we go inside and I just stretch out these two arms. Let's uh, take a look at that. All right, so we're just gonna go ahead and stretch this out. And you can do one side at a little bit and then go to the other side. Get a little bit of that. And you walk it forward. Right to the end. And then tighten this up. And then on the other side. And that's it. This is a little uh, area for living space. Sometimes the boys have thrown a mat down here and slept on this area as well. It's a great fully enclosed tent. It's got uh, great uh, mosquito nets. You can close the door completely. And then behind me, I'll take, we'll take a look at the sleeping area. The sleeping area is up here. And as you see, it can be completely walled off. So if someone wanted to go to bed and other people were down here, you could go ahead and do that. 
Now I'm going to zip open the zipper here. You might need a stool. And it's also got a mosquito net. So that's another really nice feature. We'll open that as well. And there you have it. Now up here you've got a really comfortable mattress. Alright, so as you can see there's a big bed up here, a really thick mattress, very comfortable and uh, easily sleeps two people. You could have uh, the dog sometimes or a third person. The windows all open up so you can have full 360 view of the surrounding areas and we do that often to let the breeze through and everything like everywhere else in the tent is screened. I'm going to show you how to put up the rain fly. That's a very important part of it. Anything that's touching canvas will get wet in a big rainstorm but they've designed this really well with a very thick uh, rain cover. So you just pop these off and start installing these arms to hold it up. Alright, now we've got the rain fly all set up and the last thing, and they've thought of everything, uh, you often find yourselves in high winds and in order to keep everything together they've got these straps that are, you just simply clip here, tighten up. And we've been in all kinds of wind situations, uh, especially recently on the, on the beach in Texas and we've never had a problem. So the trailer has t independent timber and suspension, so it's very, it works great in the field. Um, we have airbags, which I'll show you in a second, but we lower it down when we're in camp so you can work comfortably in the kitchen, and then we can just pump them back up when we get on the trail. Um, it's got the wheels that came with the trailer. We're thinking of, uh, there's some adapters we've acquired that'll help us put on Jeep wheels so that we only have to carry one spare tire. All right, so to fill the airbags, you, there's two, uh, hose bibs right here we just take the air compressor out of the Jeep and we can pump it up or down. They're also great for leveling if we're on uneven ground you can lower one or raise another to get level side to side and then to get level front to back we use this uh, jack here and we can go ahead and level that way. So you always want to of course the bed to be as level as possible and some people ask us how we um, find out whether it's level other than just looking by eye and we've used these little stick on levels that you can buy on Amazon or even at Walmart but uh, I've recently got an app on my phone and that's been one of the handiest and I'll show you how that works. So the app's called Bubble Level, it's a free app and it's basically no different than a bubble level you'd use in a workshop. So we can see uh, that it's a little bit up in the front so I'm just going to lower it a little bit and when the bubble's right in the middle it's perfectly level. And that's good enough for me for a good night's sleep. All right, I hope you enjoyed the walk around of this trailer and this awesome Easy On tent. Um, we are in a shop right now in Oklahoma, as you know, we're doing the build of our Jeep and there's a few more days left. So we are actually camping out right here. We're gonna get a meal going for, uh, for you guys and, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and thanks for watching. All right, with St. Patty's Day coming up, next week. I thought I'd make a corned beef meal with cabbage. Um, just something really cozy for this Sunday. So I hope you guys enjoy it. Okay, so I'm going to let that brown sugar and Guinness and garlic sit for about an hour and then I'll put in the vegetables. So the build is going great and we've been having a really good time here at the shop getting everything done. It's kind of nice to get all those little things fixed. 
Um, as a few of you know, about two weeks ago, my sister's husband, sorry, Wayne passed away, leaving her and her three amazing children um, here. Uh, he passed away um, from brain cancer, um, but I just wanted to say, yeah, so that's why I've been a little bit quiet um, in the last few videos, but I, I thought this meal would be kind of cozy. <laughs> it, um, um, yeah, it's good to use your time, tell everyone you love them, and I love you Mary, Sylvia, Emma, and Sam. Miss you guys. onions, carrots, and potatoes cook just for a little bit before adding in the cabbage. A big thank you to our Patreon family and to our amazing sponsors and to you for watching our videos every week. It's all of us together that is, makes it so that we can bring family friendly programming to YouTube every single week. And in the meantime, we'll see you down the road. <laughs>